to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let that grace lord like a better bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wonder lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love take my heart oh take and seal it seal it
Good morning and welcome to Bishop Auckland Methodist Church. You are joining me whenever I'm feeling a bit peckish. I, I wonder if you've had your breakfast and are well satisfied this morning. The theme of our service, or the text for our service, is this. Happy are you who are hungry now, you will be filled which is a wonderful promise because, as I say, I feel a bit peckish. I've had my porridge this morning, and there were even chocolate bits on the porridge. I had some lovely orange juice that seemed to be frozen in the bottle as it was on our doorstep outside, uh, uh, delivered at night. But still, peckish, hungry for more. And I hope you are hungry for more as you join us in worship whether you're listening at home on 105.9 Bishop FM or whether you're watching in different parts of the world, grab a donut and join us for worship this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice and be glad in it. And we'll be glad as we sing our first hymn, All My Hope on God is founded. And I hope we are looking to God for more than donuts this morning, but we place our trust and our faith in Him. Our hope is in a God who satisfies, who feeds the hungry. <laughs> Right. 
Christ his Son, Christ doth call one and all, he who follows shall not fall. Are you still? food while you're listening and watching this. We're hungry for many things. We long to be satisfied. But this weekend, as we approach St. Valentine's Day, we are perhaps most hungry in this world for love. And the good thing is, as we come into God's presence, we come to a loving God who promises to satisfy us and meet our hunger for love. So let us meet that loving God in prayer. Let us pray. And for those who are watching on YouTube, you can join in the responses in our liturgy this morning. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help, Help us, us to, to remember, remember that, that you are here with us. us. May we pray to you in faith, sing your praise with gratitude, and listen to your word with eagerness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, source of all blessing, help us to worship you with all our heart and mind and strength. For you alone are God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We continue our praise and adoration. Praise be to you, O God, the maker of the universe, by, by whose wisdom, wisdom we are created, created and, and sustained. sustained. Praise be to you, O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by, by whose, whose love we are redeemed, redeemed and forgiven. forgiven. Praise be to you, O God, the source of all holiness, by, by whose Spirit we are made whole and brought to perfection. Praise be to you, O God, source of all being, eternal Word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We may be confessing our lack of love and our need for love this morning, we may be confessing our rumbling stomachs that are making noises in church or sitting at home. But there are sins and failings that we need to come to God and confess that are more serious, that mar our relationship with this world, that mar our relationship with one another, and yes, with a loving God, a loving God who is still ready to hear our confession and to forgive. And so let us confess our sins to God for our foolishness and our thoughtless use of the gifts of your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For our neglect of you and our failure to love and care for others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. For our selfishness in prayer and our carelessness in worship, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And here is good news for all who put their trust in Christ Jesus. He says, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thanks 
be to God. And a collect for this day. You alone, O God, can satisfy our deepest hunger and protect us from the lure of wealth and power. Teach us to seek your kingdom above all else, that we may know the security and joy of those who put their trust in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Neve is going to sing to us, Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen. And were you joining in at home with the Alleluia, Amen? I think I detected Vanessa's voice singing along with Neve. Alleluia, Amen. God, you provide for us. You feed us. You nourish us. You love us. You build us up in so many ways. Why would we turn away from you? You satisfy us whenever we come to you. And yet the record of Scripture and the record of our own lives is we tend to look for other sources of nourishment, food, other sources uh, uh, to feed us. But they don't always nourish us in the same way. Jeremiah, I think, was hungry at times, especially whenever they threw him down a well and he had no access to food. But we turn to the prophet Jeremiah for his wisdom, and Lucy will read for us from Jeremiah chapter 17 and verses 5 to 10. The Lord says, I will condemn the person who turns away from me and puts his trust in man, in the strength of mortal man. He is like a bush in the desert, which grows in the dry wilderness, on salty ground where nothing else grows. Nothing ever good happens to him. But I will bless the person who puts his trust in me. He is like a tree growing near a stream and sending out roots to the water. It is not afraid when hot weather comes. Because its leaves stay green. It has no worries when there is no rain. It keeps on bearing fruit. Who can understand the human heart? There is nothing else so deceitful. It is too sick to be healed. I, the Lord, search the minds and test the hearts of men. I treat each one according to the way he lives, according to what he does. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lucy, for reading for us this morning. And for those who were listening on, for those of you listening on radio, uh, you missed Lucy wrapped up in a fine scarf. Um, it's not that she had a sore throat. I don't think she's um, sick and waiting to be healed like the deceitful people that Jeremiah speaks about. I, I think she's been out in the cold morning where yeah, my orange juice was being frozen in the bottle on the doorstep and Lucy was taking precautions to wrap herself up so she could speak clearly to us and we could hear her voice this morning. The blessings of God. 
the blessings of God is that although it's cold this morning, the sun is shining in Bishop Auckland, and we rejoice at that. We rejoice at the blessings and the happiness that God gives us in many different ways. And our next reading, which Katie will bring to us, is Psalm 1, and that also speaks of true happiness and blessing. Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but those who delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way to the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Thank you, Katie, for bringing us and reminding us there are two choices, there are two ways. There's God's way of blessing, and yes, there's a way that leads to destruction. But the way to destruction, God does not want us to take. And Christ Jesus came into this world and, yes, died for us and conquered death and rose again so that we may find that way to life and blessing for all eternity. And Cliff brings us a New Testament hope of blessing in the death and resurrection of Jesus as he reads to us from 1 Corinthians. Thank you, Cliff. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, and reading verses 12 to 20. Now, since our message is that Christ has been raised from death, how can some of you say that the dead will not be raised to life? If that is true, it means that Christ was not raised. And if Christ has not been raised from death, then we have nothing to preach and you have nothing to believe. More than that, we are shown to be lying about God, because we said that he raised Christ from death. But if it is true that the dead are not raised to life, then he did not raise Christ. For if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is a delusion and you are still lost in your sins. It would also mean that the believers in Christ who have died are lost. If our hope in Christ is good for this life only and no more, then we deserve more pity than anyone else in the world. But the truth is that Christ has been raised from death as the guarantee that those who sleep in death will also be raised. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Cliff, for reminding us that all that we eat, all that we enjoy as blessings in this world are for nothing if it, it, is, if it is just for a few short years on this planet. We look forward to the blessing of God for all eternity. We look forward to feasting on His love, for rejoicing in His love for all all of time, and we thank God for that. As we come to our gospel reading, we have the gospel, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And a reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 6, and verses 17 to 26. Hear the Gospel of Christ. Glory Glory to to Christ Christ our Saviour. Jesus teaches and heals. When Jesus had come down from the hill with the apostles, he stood on a level place with a large number of his disciples. A large crowd of people was there from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal cities of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. 
those who were troubled by evil spirits also came and were healed. All the people tried to touch him, for power was going out from him and healing them all. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, Happy are you poor. The kingdom of God is yours. Happy are you who are hungry now. You will be filled. Happy are you who weep now. Yes, you will laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you, and say that you are evil all because of the Son of Man. Be glad when that happens and dance for joy because a great reward is kept for you in heaven. For their ancestors did the very same things to the prophets. But how terrible for you, who are rich now. You have had your easy life. How terrible for you who are full now. You will go hungry. How terrible for you who laugh now. You will mourn and weep. How terrible when all people speak well of you their ancestors said the very same things about the false prophets. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Happy are you who are hungry now. You will be filled Am I still making you hungry with all that talk of donuts? Well, I've got something extra special with me this morning. It tells me it's extra special. The label says extra special. It comes from a certain supermarket ha that has a, a, its own food that is extra special. I won't mention the name of the supermarket, but they're extra special, or so they claim. And this extra special food that I have this morning is in a gold wrapper. A, it must be extra special and expensive. And I've never had it, but I came across this and I thought it was a bargain. It is oak smoked garlic. And not just oak smoked garlic, this is smoked over oak wood for a naturally aromatic flavor. It is extra special, it is brilliant, it is a garlic clove. Oh, Vanessa says, oh, no, um, I thought it was oak smoked, I thought it was roasted uh, uh, and it's raw. There might have been a bit of oak smoke around it, but oh, that's bitter. Oh, I need something sweet after that. that. That might be extra special if you roast it in the oven with a lovely bit of olive oil, with a bit of rosemary or something over the top, would be absolutely beautiful. But raw, no. I've been talking about donuts all morning, and the advantage is that in the pulpit, as I stand here this morning in the church, I have a donut. Mmm. A very messy, ice-glazed donut that does not make it easy to preach. Mm. That tastes, uh, takes away some of the taste of raw garlic. Happy are you who are hungry now. You will be filled. And I have, apart from one bite out of my donut, mm, the sugar bits are falling off. Apart from one bite out of my donut, I have that promise whenever the next hymn is being sung or whenever the service is finished, I have the food there that will satisfy my hunger and fill me at least for five minutes. But on this day, 
We are hungry, I hope, for more than raw garlic or even a sugar-coated donuts. Are we not hungry for love this Valentine's uh, time? Are we hungry for that uh, someone to hold us, care for us, love us, accept us as who we are? Are we hungry for that? I have signs of love behind me, love in large letters sitting on the communion table. I have roses behind me, and Vanessa might even get roses on Valentine's Day. But there are over my other shoulder also signs of love. The candle is lit, the light of Christ, the love of Christ shines through. And yes, there's another symbol of love there. There is a bread roll and a chalice containing wine. Happy are you who are hungry now, you will be filled. And being filled with God's love is feasting on God, feasting on our Lord Jesus Christ, receiving his broken body and shed blood, receiving all the blessings that he wishes to give us. For God has always wished to feed his people, bless his people, give us all that we need for fullness of life, for enjoyment in life. And yet we find that not all in this world is happy. Not all in this world is blessed. Not all in this world is as God would have it to be. So if you are feeling happy this morning, rejoice in that happiness. And if you are feeling hungry and unhappy this morning, Rejoice because God sees and cares and knows and wishes to fill you with his goodness and love and compassion. I've been reflecting this week on racial justice. This is Racial Justice Sunday, and it says racial justice is everyone's business. And there is an image that those of you in building and watching on YouTube can hopefully see. It is a, a, a mask to keep somebody safe from COVID. And on that is written, racial justice is everyone's business. And it reminds us with a load of people in behind that person wearing a mask how much we need justice, how every single person is affected. We may be hungry for love. We may be hungry for healing. We may be hungry in different ways. That COVID mask reminds us while restrictions are lifting, there are many in our community that are still isolating at home, including friends of ours in the church who are, have gone through tough times and are currently still uh, struggling at home at the moment. We are reminded that racial justice is everyone's business. For I met in recent weeks with many of the community who work in our hospital just in front of me across the road in Cockton Hill, Cockton Hill Road in Bishop Auckland. That hospital is staffed, not only to help those who have COVID and uh, the staff who've been there to care for many who've had COVID over the last couple of years, but that hospital is staffed to care for those who are struggling with knee and hip replacements, to those who go in for various clinics, for those who go in for rehab, for those who need care, for those who need the professionalism of those around them to, to build them up, to feed them again. They do care. 
The coffee is quite good also if you call in there. But it is everyone's business. And there are many in this community who work in that hospital, who come from other parts of the world. I've met, as I said, with the, commu with the community from southern India, from Kerala, many of whom work there in the hospital. If we do not promote if we do not care about racial justice, if we do not speak out about uh, racial injustice and discrimination, then the care that those good folk offer to us is our business. Happy are you who are hungry now, you will be filled. And if your need is for care and love for somebody from the hospital, then they care and love for you. Not only the staff from southern India, but all the staff wherever they come from, they meet our needs and we thank God for them. Happy are you who are hungry now, you will be filled. We have a need to be loved and cared for, especially whenever we're sick and vulnerable and ill. And we, we rejoice at all those who do care for us. But looking after our mental health, looking after our psychological well-being means getting out into the beauty of creation. And we can care for ourselves by seeing that those uh, primroses, uh, um, those snowdrops, the beginnings of daffodils and crocuses coming through in our gardens and in the church grounds. We are reminded not only that, that this is Racial Justice Sunday, we are reminded to show the love this February, to have a green heart, to care for the environment. And we find that as we care for the environment, the environment cares for us. We are happier now because we are fed with the beauty of creation around us. And whenever we couldn't leave our homes and gardens except for one walk a week, how we rejoiced in the bird song and the green leaves that were coming that spring. Happy are you who are hungry now. You will be filled. God will see our needs and meet our needs and bless our needs. Our need is for love. Our need is for racial justice and every form of justice. Our need is for environmental uh, care so that the environment may care for us, body, mind, and spirit. And we are in need for more than bread. We have garlic and doughnut sitting here, but more importantly, the bread roll and the chalice. We have that. Jesus, whenever he was hungry, whenever he was struggling with those temptations of Oh, just turn the stones, turn something into food, Jesus, so that you can do it. Jesus quoted scripture and said that we, we shouldn't live on bread alone, but every word that comes from God, from God's truth and his message to us, we should live on that, and that should be the basis of our happiness. And that message from God is about environmental respect. It is about racial justice. It is about God's love for us in our greatest need. For God so loved the world that Christ died for us, 
His body was broken as we break bread. His blood was shed. His love was poured out so that the hungry are satisfied, so that those who are weeping and grieving will have their tears dried, so that those who are persecuted may know the safety and security of the kingdom of God, so that those who are poor may have their needs met. We have a God who looks at the richness of this world and says, if you're not rich in faith, you will go hungry. And God, the same loving God who live, looks at those struggling in this world, struggling for food, struggling for warm homes, struggling for respect because of their race or sexuality, struggling for love, struggling for care and respect, struggling for faith. God looks at those who are struggling and hungry, and he says, happy are you, because as you turn to me, as you turn to Christ Jesus, as you turn to the Holy Spirit, you will be filled filled with love and blessing and goodness. That is certainly better than raw garlic and even better than a half-eaten donut. May God bless you and fill you with his love this day and every day. Amen. And so let us confess the faith of the church. We believe in God the Father, who made the world. We believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, who redeemed humankind. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. And as we gather, Father, seal us.
We mightn't have had Holy Communion this morning, but you might have had a mug of coffee and a biscuit at home. And uh, those of you who can see, you'll see that the donut is going down quite nicely. It is good to say grace before meals, and it is good to say thank you after meals. And we come to our prayers of thanksgiving. We praise you, eternal God, for the world which you have created, and for our place in it. May May you be be praised forever and and ever. You have given us life, that we may love and serve you. And though we have resisted your purpose and misused your gift, you have not left us in our sin, but have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. May May you be be praised praised forever forever and and ever. We thank you that for us he became human, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven, where he reigns in glory and prays for us. May May you you be be praised praised forever and and ever. ever. We thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to bring us to freedom and to new life in Christ. May May you you be be praised praised forever forever and and ever. So with all your church on earth and in heaven, we give you our thanks and praise. We We dedicate dedicate ourselves to to you. Strengthen Strengthen us by by your spirit spirit to to do do your your will will. and And bring bring us with with all your saints saints to the the glory glory of of your kingdom kingdom. through Through Jesus Jesus Christ Christ, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. And we continue in our prayers as we think of other people. God, our Father, grant us the help of your Spirit in our prayers for the salvation of all people. We pray for the church throughout the world and for the churches in our towns and villages with all our members those who are housebound, those who are struggling, and those who come out to worship with us. We pray for the churches working together in this area, working together to put on the passion play, the Easter story on Good Friday, that in faith and unity we may be constantly renewed by your Holy Spirit, for mission and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. We pray for the peoples of the world, for the leaders of the nations, for those who can decide whether war will be launched or not, for the people on the ground who suffer the turmoil, who live in the fear 
who live for years with the consequences of violence and war, of lack of respect, of tension between neighbors. We pray for those who work, struggle, constantly seek justice and peace and for all the leaders of the world, that they may also seek justice, freedom, and peace for each and every one. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for our country, for those who have authority and influence, for our Queen in this special year, for her government, for our local county council, for those in our town council, for those who serve one another, that they may do so in wisdom, honesty, and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those among whom we live and work, for all our neighbors, for those who have come to us from different parts of the world and those we've been living beside for many, many years who went to school with us, who are our friends and cousins and family. We pray for those that we work alongside, who bless us with support and encouragement and for neighbors who feed us, maybe with a a cup of sugar, maybe with a a donut or an invitation to go out for a, a cream scone. We thank you for those who bless us and that you place around us. We ask that we may so use your gifts that together we may find joy in one another and in your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray, as always, for those in sorrow, for those in need, anxiety, sickness, for those who are hungry. Lord, we rejoice in what we have, but one day we may go hungry. We pray for our sisters and brothers, those in the world who hunger now, who hunger for food, who hunger for warmth, who hunger for justice, who hunger for healing, who hunger for love. In their hunger, in their weakness, in their despair, may they know your strength, and in their despair, may they find hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. In you, Father, we are one family, one family on earth and in heaven. We remember in your presence those who have died, giving thanks especially for those who have revealed to us your grace in Christ, giving thanks for those with whom we shared coffee, with whom we sat round the table, who filled us with food, who filled us with love. Help us to follow the example of your saints in light and bring us with them to the fullness of your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our hymn, Merciful Lord. Merciful Lord, in your loving kindness, hear our prayer, listen to our intercession. Merciful Lord, in your loving kindness, hear our prayer, listen to our intercession. I 
And as our Savior taught his disciples, we pray together. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Community of Christ, who make the cross your own, live out your creed and risk your life for God alone. And we say together, the love of the Father enfold us, the wisdom of the Son enlighten us, the fire of the Spirit enflame us, and the blessing of God, the three in one, be upon us and abide with us now and forever. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In In the the name name of Christ, Christ. Amen. amen. And come back next week hungry for more, and the Reverend Tony Taylor and the Baptist community will help feed us with God's love. Until then, care and love one another and be filled with God's love. Amen.